Okay guys, and welcome to today's video where we're going to be taking a look at using the Atmega 328PB on an Arduino Uno. So in this video, we'll be using an Arduino Uno with a Atmega 328PB on it. We'll take a closer look at this in a minute. Uh, and then we'll also be using Minicore to make it work. So we're going to get more in depth on Minicore in this video than we really will on the circuit board. But uh, first, let's take a look at today's sponsor, JLCPCB. So everybody that watches this channel should know by now that JLCPCB is one of the largest board houses in China. Now, they also offer board assembly service and 3D printing. So you can go use EasyEDA, which is one of their tools, design your circuit board, and then send it to the board house, get the board made, and then they can do the assembly service for you and 3D print your chassis. And all that you have to do is just put the three things together when you get it in. So definitely... Give JLCPCB a try. I recommend checking out their assembly service. Well, let's start out with taking a look at this circuit board that I designed in EasyEDA uh, that's sandwiched on top of the Arduino Uno. So this is just a board to support the Atmega 328PB on there. It has a crystal oscillator, so that way we don't have to go all the way that far down. And uh, decoupling capacitors, which are on this revision that you'll be looking at there. Uh, they are not on this revision. Uh, just a design mistake I, I overlooked. I just forgot to throw decoupling capacitors on there. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at this real quick. So uh, as you can see, we have the uh, Atmega 328PB uh, in the schematic with all the pins matching the Atmega 328P uh, dip package. So you have these four pins right here, which are these right here, PE0 through 3, um, which are four extra pins that you get with the 328PB uh, versus the 328P. So um, we'll take a closer look at that later. But yes, we have four extra pins. So I just put a header on here because they wouldn't go anywhere on the Uno uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so then in the schematic, which this will be available on the GitHub here, uh, I have it panelized here, which was super easy to do in Easy ADA. Uh, I know I've been using uh, Altium for the most part on the channel recently. Uh, this is mostly because I'm trying to learn Altium because it's used more uh, professionally and I'm trying to work in the field more. But let's be honest, uh, Altium's really not meant for the hobbyist crowd and some of the tools just aren't that simple to use, especially for a hobbyist. So uh, that's why I'm uh, trying to focus back in on using KiCad and EasyEDA more on the channel uh, and try to get away from Altium on the YouTube channel. So really, there's not too much to look at here. Uh, the pins just are spaced out the same as a dip package. The way I did this to, to make sure I got them spaced out right is I actually put the uh, footprint of the dip package in first and then just lined up these pins with it so that way uh, it was done. When I was... When I was actually done doing this, one of the things I did is I printed this out as a PDF to scale so that way I could cut it out with scissors and verify that everything really did line up properly on this board and that uh, my cutout here was enough so that way you still had access to these pins and that this wasn't going to interfere with anything because I didn't want it. There are other people that have designed a similar board to this, but they had the Atmega 328PB hanging off this back end here. I didn't like that. I wanted to keep it the same size as the um, 328 so that way, or the same size as the Uno so that way if you had a chassis you like to use or a housing that you like to 3D print, uh, it should fit in there. Uh, maybe have interference problems with the actual um, uh, pins here, but it really shouldn't be too much taller. Worst case scenario with your already existing housings that you might be using with an Uno is you'll have to leave the top lid off, but it will still fit on the back end there. So that was something I, I was trying to account for in my design. But um, that's really it for taking a look at the design of the circuit board. There's not too much to uh, to look at here. Okay, so now we need to talk about Minicore because if you just plug this in and try to burn bootloader on there, the AVR dude's going to spit out an error message saying, hey, I don't recognize this chip. Now, yes, you can go in and edit the configuration on AVR dude and trick it to think that it's looking at a 328P when it's really looking at a 328PB. However, 
then you don't get all the options. So let's take a look at mini core, which will give you all of those features in there, uh, plus, uh, plus some more. Mini core actually adds support for all of these listed microcontrollers right here. So the Atmega 8, 48, 88, 168, and 328. Uh, and we're gonna get some extra clock frequencies, plus we're gonna get brownout detection, and we can enable or disable EEPROM retain, so you can set it to where it erases it every time it boots or it retains it. Now the link time optimization option here is really just for uh, backwards compatibility with uh, the Arduino IDE and not necessarily something that'll make a big difference in uh, programming. Just have it enabled unless you're using a uh, older version. Um, we get printf support, which I have never understood why uh, Arduino didn't support printf in the first place. So I think that's uh, uh, a nice little option there that he added in there. But the main reason why we need this is just so that way we can support all of these chips with all of these variants, which we're going to be using a 328 PB, which we can support now. And um, we'll still have all of the functionality of the chip, which includes the second UART pin, which is the main reason why most people would want to use a 328 PB anyways, is because you get two UART connections instead of just one, like the regular P. So that's the main reason why you would want to install mini core versus just using uh, the regular Arduino IDE and just going into AVR dude and changing a setting. Like I, I've showed you how to do this before with the 328 because you know the, the the Arduino Unos now come with a 328P variant on there. They don't have the original 328. So you have to go in there and trick AVR dude to do that. With mini core, you don't actually have to trick it. You can just go select a setting. So let's take a look at setting it up and using it. Okay, so to burn the bootloader on there, uh, we're gonna refer to this image here that's pulled up on your screen. We're gonna use a Arduino as ISP to program that and do the burn bootloader procedure. So we have our 328 PB adapter installed onto the Uno, and then we have another Uno being used as ISP. This wire's coming out there. Uh, but it's it's pretty simple wiring. Uh, pin 10 goes to reset, then you have your power, and then just thir 13 to 13, 12 to 12, and 11 to 11 on there. Um, so let's go ahead and open up Arduino, and we're going to ch get all our settings how we want them. So we have a 16 megahertz external crystal, which is what I have on there. You can also use the internal oscillator, so you don't even have to put the crystal on there at all. Uh, you can use internal up to eight. Uh, brownout detection, uh, I have no need for brownout detection. What that will do is if the voltage hits any of these, uh, it will shut down uh, automatically. The um, EPOM retained, I do want it on. I want LTO enabled. I have a 328 and we are on UART zero uh, because that is the default one, how it's wired on there. So we will be using uh, UART zero for bootloader and our port that we're gonna be using is that. And we need to set to Arduino as ISP. And now we can burn bootloader and it is done burning the bootloader. So we now have a running bootloader on this board. Okay, so now you can see it has that kind of double blink uh, program that runs on there when you first burn the bootloader and have nothing else going. Uh, so let's go in and verify that it will actually uh, program that this is a working bootloader. So we have to change it to AVR ISP and then change our port to the COM port that that one's on. So now let's go ahead and upload this sketch, which is just the normal one second blink sketch. Okay, and that does in fact work. And you can see we now have that one second blink sketch running. Okay guys, well, if you guys are interested in one of these, I'm not actually selling them, at least at the moment. If there's some interest in it, I can uh, build some more and sell them on the new revision. Uh, however, down in the description, you will find a link to the GitHub where you can get all the files to produce this. I'll also probably link the Easy EDA project as an open project if I can uh, figure out how to do that. So that way you guys can edit it yourself. 
One thing to note if you're going to try to build this thing yourself is that I did use some uh, 0402 capacitors. So those are pretty small. They might be a little bit more difficult to solder on if you're not used to going down to that small of a package. Uh, but uh, I probably will do a giveaway of one of these. Um, so keep an eye on the channel. Uh, see if you see a YouTube short from me for doing a giveaway or doing a community post on there. So definitely subscribe so you don't miss that. And one other thing, if you want me to do some more in-depth videos or do just some general projects with a 328 PB, I'm more than happy to do that. The real reason why I made this was to help me diagnose something I was working on for a client. Um, I decided that this would just be the easiest way to do it. Instead of working with their board, I could work with a uh, Arduino Uno uh, to kind of diagnose what was going on. Uh, but it's something I am open to doing some videos on the channel about on uh, just the 328 PB. So um, let me know if you have any interest in that and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.